different, so you simply have to learn them and memorize them. So for the verb cook, it's a regular verb. It takes ed. So we would conjugate it like this. I will have cooked. You, for one, will have cooked. He, she, or it will have cooked. We will have cooked. You, for more than one, will have cooked. And they will have cooked. So it's very simple to form because it doesn't change very much. So that's how you form the future perfect. You take the auxiliary verb have, put it in the future, will have, and then add the past participle of your verb. But what does it mean? Let's look at the meaning of the future perfect. The present perfect was something that was finished by now, by this time today. The future perfect is something that will be finished by some point in the future. So we are at a future time looking back at something. Even though that thing has not happened yet, it may not be finished now, but by this time in the future, sometime in the future, this event will be finished. Maybe this diagram will help you to understand. If you look at this picture, here's where I am now. This is today. This is now. And I'm looking at things that I have to do tomorrow. And so tomorrow, I would say I must play football, I must clean my room, I must help my father. So when I'm speaking simply about the future, I would put that in the future simple tense. What will I do tomorrow? I will play football. I will clean my room. I will help my father. Those things will all happen tomorrow. Now let's assume that those things do happen tomorrow. They are all finished tomorrow. Then if I go forward one week in time, and then I look back, then I would say those things were finished. So I can say by next week, by this time, I will have played football. By this time next week, I will have cleaned my room. By this time next week, I will have helped my father. I will have played football. I will have cleaned my room. I will have helped my father. So when we use the future perfect tense, we are always talking about some time in the future when these things will be finished. So a future perfect tense sentence will always have a time marker in it. We're saying by this time or at this time. Now we can say that time uh, in any way we like. We can say by six o'clock or by next week, or at 2.30. We can say these in different ways. But the time marker, it can go at the beginning of the sentence, or it can go at the end of the sentence. I can say, by next week, I will have cleaned my room. Or I can say, I will have played football by next week. But the meaning is the same. These things are not finished now, but by this time in the future, they will be finished. So I hope this helps you to understand how we form the future perfect tense and how we use it, what it means. Okay, so if on, on the back of your paper, I'd like you to think of some sentences using the perfect, future perfect tense. So try to write a few sentences. We just went over some. So we did, like, by the wedding day, Martha will have gotten a present. Let's try to think of some new ones, okay? Or like we were saying, Lena, by tomorrow, Lena will have built a sandcastle. Okay? So the students are writing some sentences now. Now it's your turn. Let's do that together. I'm going to ask you to write three sentences using the future perfect tense. Let's remind ourselves now how we would construct these sentences. Let's begin these sentences with a time marker. 
Now I said they can go at the beginning or the end, but for now, let's put the time marker at the beginning. So your formation is time marker, subject, will have, and the past participle of the verb, and then any other information you need to add. So I could say, for example, by next week, Sasha will have fixed his bike. By next week, Sasha will have fixed his bike. His bicycle might be broken now. Maybe it is not fixed now. But he will do it maybe tomorrow. And so by next week, Sasha will have fixed his bike. So I'm going to ask you to take a piece of paper and write three sentences using the future perfect tense about yourself or someone else you know. Are you ready? Let's begin. Please stop the video and do the activity. Now let's join the class and listen to some of the sentences that they wrote using the future perfect tense. Okay. So we're going we're gonna to share the sentences that we made. If you didn't write one, you can sit, just try to, you can make one up if you want to. So let's try. Who would like to share? Okay, you want to come up front, Elisa, and read your sentence? By September, Martha will cook a cookie. We'll have. We'll have cookie. Cook. Very good. Lena will have played football by tomorrow. Good job. So Lena will have played football by tomorrow. We're going to play a little game. So this game is called a future perfect tense snap game. So I'm just going to have two of you come up at a time and you're going to you're going to each stand here. You're going to flip a card over and if it is using the future perfect tense, you snap it. Okay? And whoever gets it first wins that card. And if it isn't, you don't you don't touch the card. Okay? So only if it's using the future perfect tense. So I'll just read this one. Let me okay. I will win this game by the end of class. Is that using, using the future perfect? Mm, no. no. Why? Because I, I will. I will have. Wait. Okay. So, mix that one up. And we'll have, we'll have Elisa and Tanya come up first. Okay, so you can each drop. I'm going to flip the card over, okay? So ready? Mm -hmm. okay. Whoa, did you get a chance to read it? I never even read it. Let's see. By the end of the month, I will receive my certificate. That's not... Yeah. No. So this one, you win. You win this one. Okay, let's try another one. No. Oh, okay. It says the cattle will trample the flowers by the time the farmer gets there. No. 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 Right. Good job. Let's try this one. Yes. You think yes? Oh yes. Let's see. By the end of class, I will have won this game. No. 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 It is one. <laughs> it is. Good job. This is, I will have won this game by the end of class. Good job. You guys can go sit down. Ooh, that would look like pretty close to a tie. Let's see. By the end of the month, I will have received my certificate. Yes. 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 Very good. So who, who got Misha. it first? Misha? Misha, she put on the paper. Okay. Let's try this one. You want to read that one, Misha? Mm -hmm. The cows will have uh, trampled the flowers by uh, the time the farmer got there. So the cows will have trampled the flowers by the time the farmer gets there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Will have trampled, E-D on the end. Very good. Is that one yours? Yep. 
Let's try one more. <laughs> you gonna read it? I will have to get dinner and by the time you go. By the time you come. So I will have cooked dinner by the time you come. Yes. 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 Good job. Okay, you boys can go sit down. You see the students playing this game together on the table with the small pieces of paper. The game is called Snap because the first person to put their hand down wins if they are right. So the worksheet that came with this video has those sentences on it. You can cut them up and play that game if you want. But we're also going to do this on the screen now. This is a little different way to play this game. I will show you a sentence on the screen and you must sit with a friend, a partner. So two people together. So in your room, choose a partner so there are just two of you. I will show you a sentence and if this sentence is in the future perfect, you must stand up. And if you are the first one to stand up and you are correct, you get a point. If you stand up and the sentence is not in the future perfect, then your partner gets a point because you were wrong. So you have to make sure the sentence is in the future perfect and then be the first one to stand up and you will get a point. If you stand up and you are wrong, then your friend gets the point, okay? Let's play this game together. So watch the sentences that come on the screen and see whether they're in the future perfect. And then if you need to, you can pause the video after each sentence and check it. Have a good look at it to see if it is in the future perfect. Are you ready now? Choose a partner and begin the game. By next Friday, I will have finished school. Stand up if this sentence is in the future perfect tense. Yes, it is. I will never have a dog. No. I will have eaten dinner by the time you get here. Yes. Joanne works hard every day. By next month, Sasha will have lived in Paris for two years. Yes. Dima will have fixed his bike by next Tuesday. Yes. Does Annette have a new iPod today? The cat will have killed the mouse by six o'clock. Yes. I will have learned all about English by next year. Yes. My family traveled to Hawaii. What did we learn today in class? Future perfect tense. Right. And what is the future perfect tense? By the way, what does it? It has the subject, and then it has the past participle. What is the past participle? E D and E N. Good. And then it has a time clue. Also, I never wrote that up there. So what is the time clue? Like by tomorrow, that would be a time clue. By, by next month or by the wedding day, that gives you the time clue. Okay. So let's try, let's try to make, I'm going to erase this and see if you're, okay. Who can think of a sentence we never thought of yet? Using future perfect. <laughs> 
Um, let, let's, let's, let's help. In Monday, Tanya will... By Monday, Tanya will have... Will have... Kind of played... In the piano. Played piano? So by Monday, Tanya will have played the piano. Very good. Let's try one more. Um, Misha. I, uh, mm -hmm. Play football. Tomorrow. So Misha will have play football tomorrow. by tomorrow. Very good. Good job. So that's the end of this class. Thank you. Wrapping up 69, take one. Well, let's wrap up. What did we learn today? Well, we learned that the future perfect tense is something we use to talk about something that is not finished now, but by a different time, a certain time in the future, it will be finished. So in our minds, we're traveling to the future and looking back. That's one way to look at this. It can sound a little bit confusing, but as we use it, I hope it will become a little bit more clear. So we use the future perfect tense to talk about things that are in the future, and by that time, they will be finished. So it's a little bit like traveling to the future and looking back. All right. Well, I hope this has helped you to understand how we use the future perfect tense. This is English Without Limits. I'm Doug Sadler, and by this time tomorrow, I hope that you will have had a good day.